Hello, Iran. How are you today? Doing great, ma'am. How are you? Uh, I'm good too. Thank you for asking. So what did you do this weekend? The weather was good, right? It wasn't this warm in a while. Yes, ma'am. It was refreshing. <laughs> right? We went to, ca to a cafe with my friend this weekend and I had really fun doing this chap reading this chapter there. Uh, so I hope we can have fun uh, discussing about this chapter with you guys too. So in today's class, uh, we are going to um, talk about one of William Shakespeare's greatest plays, Macbeth. Uh, I'm curious, has anyone ever read it before? Was it different from reading it from the first time? Um, mm -hmm. For me, reading li literary works again after some time always uh, bring, bring me a new perspective about the characters. Anyone? Mm, Ma'am, actually, this is my first time reading it. Mm. Uh, but I, I think I agree with you. Our ideas change over time due to what we experience in mm. our life. We can understand the characters more if we experience uh, familiar things with them. And thank you, Sinem. I also agree with you on this. I think people's opinions can change over time as they um, grow, read, and live among uh, different kind of people. So it's essential we read these works uh, again and again. And so I prepared some pictures for you here. Can you all see it well? Yes. Uh, so what do you see in this picture? Mm. A snake wrapped around a wand. Yes, right. And does this pick uh, ring any bell, bell for you? Yes, it's familiar. Familiar. So this logo actually belongs to a company that sells um, medical instruments called Esculap. Esculap, uh, you might have um, seen it before. They have very famous uh, guide books about how to use these in medical instruments. And the name Esculap cam comes from uh, the god of medicine and uh, healing named Asclepius. Uh, from ancient, um, he is from ancient Greek mythology. Um, Greek mythology can be found in many areas from um, med medical department to literary works. Uh, <clears throat> another example is uh, morphine. Maybe you you are um you guys are medical students so you must be familiar familiar with morphine right? Yes. Morphine is the medication that is used to put the patients to sleep. Uh, it's com um, the name comes from Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams, for its tendency to put the patients to sleep. And in our play, uh, William Shakespeare uses. Um, the witch sister known as the Moira, uh, the fates in the play. And also he uses um, the Greek goddess of uh, magic and spells, Hecate. Um, these parallels maybe shows us the doomed fate of Macbeth. And I know you guys like role playing, so I prepared some uh, small skit for you. Uh, let's watch the video first and then we can form the groups to do it, okay? A foul and fair day I have not seen. How far is called the forest? Please. The withered, the wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are unclean. Live you? Are you what that man may question? You seem to understand me by each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail, my bear. Hail to the Eden of glory. All hail, my bear. Hail to the Eden of Cordor. All hail, my bear. That shalt be king, Gareth. Now, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? The name of truth. A fantastical, but that indeed without the new growth. Noble part of the Greek with present grace. 
the great critics and the noble thing that as well as his Speak not. You can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not speak then to me. Do not beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Mm. Mm. Less of them that bear and greater. Not so happy yet, much happier. Thou shalt get kings, and thou be none. Who will hail Macbeth and Banquo? Banquo and Macbeth, or he? Spare, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By my father's death, I know I'm saying of arms. But how of Cordor? The plain of Cordor lives a prosperous gentleman, and to be king. There is not even the prospect of belief. No more than to be Cordor. Say from whence you have this strange intelligence, and why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such pathetic greeting. Speak! I charge you! Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. That's Such things here must we do speak of what have we eaten in the insane root that makes the reason prison. Your children shall be kings. You will be king. And say, And do not say. The self same tune and words. Did you like the video? Yes. And they did an amazing job acting this part, right? So if you're ready, we can do our a part in role playing and CNM's group can start first. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. How far is it called the forest? What are these so withered and so wild in their attire? that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are owned, the view, or are you owed? That man may question, you seem to understand me, by each at once her choppy finger laying, upon her skin lips you should be a woman, and yet your birds forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can, what are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glams. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Caldor. All hail Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start, start and seem to fear? Things that do sound so fair. I the name of the truth. Are ye fantastical or that indeed? Which old world ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope. That he seems rough with all, to me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will you grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear, your favors nor your hate. Hail! Hail, hail, lesser than Macbeth, and greater, not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. By snail death, I know I am Tain of Glums, but how of Cavdor? The Tain of Cavdor lives. A prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Kevdar. Say from whence you all this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted head you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak, I charge you! The earth had bubbles as the weather has, and these are of them. 
Whither are they vanished? Into the air. And what seemed corporal melted as breeds into the wind? Would they have stayed? Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane road that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be the king. And Tain of Calder too, when it not so. To the sad same tune and words, who is here? Thank you for participating. Uh, you all did an amazing job. And now we can move on to our uh, writer. As you all know, William Shakespeare is a very, very famous English play, playwright and poet. He was considered to be the uh, one of the greatest, greatest writers in the English language. He invented over 1,700 words that are still used today. Um, Shakespeare's work has also influenced many writers, um, including Thomas Hardy, uh, William Faulkner, and Charles Dickens. I think uh, these writers that I just mentioned are great factors in our lives. So I suggest you to read as many works as you can from these writers to broaden your perspectives. And if you're ready, we can start this. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, are there any Turkish writers influenced by Shakespeare? Oh, yes. There is a, a Turkish writer named Necip Fazıl, as you all know. His, uh, his work, Bir Adam Yaratmak, was um, influenced by William Shakespeare Hamlet. Okay. Okay. If you're ready, uh, we can start discussing about the play. The play. The play starts with three witch sisters. Uh, they immediately set a dark, gloomy atmosphere. They look horrifying, ominous, and unnatural. Uh, and this is our first hint that Macbeth's end does not end well. In Act One, Scene Three, um, Macbeth and Benko encounters these witches and start to make fun of their appearances, uh, saying they look, um, they could hardly consider them as women because they have beards and they are extremely ugly. Although Macbeth and Benko are taken a bit back about their appearances, and um, they listen and approve their prophecies. The prophecy says that Macbeth is going to be the Thane of Glams, and then he's going to be the Thane of um, Caldor, and then he's going to be the king. Um, after Macbeth, the witches uh, greet Benko as the father of the future kings. Um, although he is not going to be a king, king himself. Disoriented and a bit curious about these prophecies, Benko demands an explanation, but the witches disappear. They talk among themselves about these prophecies and promised titles, and Benko supports the idea of Macbeth becoming a king, but Macbeth seems a bit taken aback about his descendant, descendants not becoming kings, although he was promised to be one. We see that Macbeth is not so satisfied about even the mere idea of sharing this title with Benko's descendants. Do you think it's great for power upsetting Macbeth even when they, um, even when they thought the first prophecy becoming true was just a coincidence? Um, in my opinion, Macbeth is greedy. He wants more. Right, he's way too greedy. And if you look at the uh, relationship between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth, we see um, first we see a couple that trust and and supports and value each other dearly. Although the plans they made were blood curdling and murderous, they decided and implemented them together. And at that time, Lady Macbeth didn't seem too eager to be the queen. Uh, right? Uh, but she was willing to get blood, blood on her hands uh, for Macbeth to become king. Also at this time, uh, Macbeth had many companions and who valued and respected him. And Benko even thought that he was a man worthy of becoming king, right? But Macbeth's greed for uh, power had led to loss of these 
people that people that were so close to him, and he lived um, instead a life of full of fear and remorse. And now I want you to discuss among your groups um, about the question you see in the board. Do you think it, uh, it's human's nature to be selfish and put themselves first, even for their family or loved ones? And CNM's group is going to um, support the idea and AJ's group is going to uh, disprove the idea. Please come up with a few sentences uh, in which you can defend your ideas. It would be much better if you could uh, support your idea with the parts from the book, okay? And uh, we will choose the um, group whose opinion we agree with the most by voting. And I'm going to give you 15 minutes. Okay, time is up. Uh, edges uh, CNAMS group, sorry, can start first. <clears throat> um, in my opinion, humans born with cruelty. I have a toddler niece at home. We have never shown violence to her nor made her watch violent things. But still, when she gets angry, she shouts without caring whoever the per the other person is, and sometimes uh, hits them when she's not doing what she wants. Uh, we teach her to be polite and ask nicely if she really wants something. Because if we don't teach her to be kind, she can't see that what, what's wrong, uh, what's, uh, she's, what she's doing is wrong. But even after all this, uh, we are not sure if she's going to be a kind person throughout her life or not. In, in the play, Macbeth appeared to be a loyal a nobleman and a man that was in love with uh, his wife at first. But at the end, when Lady Macbeth fell in and died after all that she had done for Macbeth to become king, Macbeth chose not to even go near her and continued to uh, live in stress, thinking about his so-called kingdom. Uh, humans, I believe, are born selfish, unkind, and uncaring. Kindness is learned, uh, and to be kind, you must uh, fight against human nature. That's why uh, kindness is so impressive. That was very good, thank you. And Edges group can uh, continue. Okay, in my opinion, uh, we born with the ability to love and care for. We need our parents from the moment we are born. Our families put us uh, at the center of their lives and think about our, our health and needs first. Even when going through difficult times, um, a parent doesn't leave their children behind. With a sense of, sense of responsibility, uh, we focus on protecting those who are weaker than us. Then uh, we see this in the play as well. Lady Macbeth, who uh, we can say was more cold-blooded than Macbeth and who seemed to be had an iron wheel, um, never seemed too eager for the throne, but uh, she still lost her mental health in order to fulfill her husband's desire. She stood up for him when Macbeth saw Banquo ghost at the feast and started shouting in fear. She didn't do all this because someone told her to do it. But because of her innate sense of care, I think, um, humans always try uh, to do what they think is right. Yes, thank yeah. you. I think both of the groups did an amazing job. Well done. I'm so proud of you. And we can now uh, vote. Who thinks CNM's group did a better job? Okay. And who thinks Edges group did a better job? <laughs> so CNAM's group won by four people. Congratulations. Do you have any questions? Um yes, I have a question. Yes. Um what about you? What's your op opinion about this idea? I think that in the play, Macbeth really seemed to be a loving husband and caring person at first, but I think people born with um, cruelty, as you said, he, even though he was um, loved by many people, he still chose to be um, 
he still chose to be a bad guy, right? He lost many people and he lost his life at the end. So I think that um, people also, I think people born with cruelty. Okay, so any more questions? No? Okay, mm. I think this was a great lesson and you guys did amazing. And uh, do you have any more questions about the book? Okay, if you have more questions about the play, you can um, as always ask me in the le next lesson. Now I will explain your homework. I would like you to write a short essay about the unnatural ways of birth uh, that happened in the play. And why did Macbeth think uh, no human could kill him? I want you to write this uh, about this. And thank you for participating. See you next week. See you. Have a nice day. Thank you.